Hello, you know me as Unstoppable Tracy. Welcome to We Can Wednesday in this WAP Yourself Into Action group, Wealthy, Healthy, On Purpose. These next few episodes on Wednesday, we deepen our confidence and commitment to managing some challenging conversations and give some constructive feedback sharing some gold nuggets learned through the Ken Blanchard companies and their content. So when you think back to challenging conversations you've had, what were they about? Were they complex or disagreements about facts or goals or work processes or ownership or values or relationships? Relationships like communication, style differences, strong feelings. Conflict around facts could be around lack of information, misinformation, different views or interpretations. Goals, conflicts can be differences in what each party wants to accomplish. Work processes or procedures, conflict is kind of differences in perception about the appropriate process or procedure or tactic to accomplish these goals. And relationship conflict is usually around misperceptions, maybe stereotypes, involves poor communication, includes boundary violations, strong emotions, low tolerance for the other person's reality, hypersensitivity to feedback, maybe style differences like introvert or extrovert. What feelings or less than optimal behaviors surfaced during and after the challenging conversation, right? Probably things like anger, blame, defensive, sarcasm, conniving, lack of caring, passivity, stubbornness, frustration, annoyance. You know, if you were feeling these intense feelings, there's often only either attack and fight or stuff it and flight and then the other two options are more like a feel and deal so fight or flight work through it alone or work through it with others so certainly there's a decision as well to be made whether you have the conversation or you decided not to have the challenging conversation So maybe you're not having the conversation because the certain person does not have that commitment to have this challenging conversation right now with you at this time or you feel like you have more to lose than to gain by holding a challenging conversation. This issue is too hot to have a challenging conversation so you need time to cool off before jumping in or the project or your team could be a serious risk if the conversation doesn't go well or you don't have the skills to deal with the situation or the conversation if it doesn't go well. So these are the reasons that people often don't take on the conversation. Though there's also an avoidance syndrome and surveys and focus groups show that the following communication pattern is really prevalent when people are faced with needing to have a challenging conversation. So if there's a small problem, typically the action is to avoid it. If there's sort of a medium-sized problem, the action is typically to just sort of smooth it over. But if it then becomes a crisis, the action is to take a quick unilateral decision based on incomplete information. And then the results for these actions are poor solutions and damaged relationships. So when do you decide to actually have the challenging conversation? Often it's because the customer or client relationship is at risk and your productivity or the other person's productivity or your team's productivity is suffering and you have feedback for the other person that's critical to their performance maybe or you have heard rumors that you need to address or morale is poor, or the relationship is strained, or one valuable way when all of this is you've decided to jump in is to get your defenses down. And it's easier to problem solve and create true collaboration with outcomes and build that trust. So today we'll share three tips for lowering defensiveness. And in the upcoming Weekend Wednesdays, we'll continue setting us up for success by looking at deciding when and where to have a challenging conversation and effective ways to speak about the content during the conversation and offer you a speak model. So today's three tips for lowering defensiveness. One, allow your feelings to surface. And two, after venting, take some time to tell the truth. And three, whenever you feel triggered, 
practice asking yourself, what assumptions am I making? So number one, allowing your feelings to surface. Do not repress and stuff your feelings down. And if there's time to vent them with a colleague or trusted family member or a friend or a trusted HR rep or a counselor, and if you don't have anybody to talk to, then choose to vent your feelings by writing them down. A caution with that, though, is make sure you don't leave that paper that you wrote out laying around. So number two, after venting, take some time to tell the truth, at least to yourself, about the situation. Notice the difference in how you feel when you say, I am hurt and angry that X keeps going behind my back on this project versus the judgmental way of saying, X has always been a difficult person. Now, the more you get used to speaking deeply and the less you'll find yourself blaming others and projecting anger onto them and the less defensive they will be in the conversation. So number three, whenever you feel triggered, practice asking yourself, what assumptions am I making about the internal process of this person? based on his or her observable behaviors. You know, try to separate what you can observe from what you know to be true. And you will generally feel less emotionally charged. You know, this is not the same thing as denying your feelings. It decreases your defensiveness to acknowledge that we can only assume or interpret, right? We never know for sure what a given action means to someone else. So the benefits of lowering defensiveness is it lowers personal defensiveness and it lowers relationship tension and it increases problem solving and conflict resolution. Thank you for joining this Weekend Wednesday. Be sure to subscribe to Unstoppable Tracy and Wealthy Healthy on Purpose. See you next time, folks.